All right, well, I think we're just going to let it rock here. Hey, this is Billy with Cabin People. Uh, and I'm going to do something I've never done before, make a cooking video, because why not? Um, you know, one of the things I find the most fascinating about the Food Network is that uh, people are enthralled by it because they love to watch cooking shows. Um, and, you, and you ask them why you love cooking shows and, 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 and they say because we love food. And, and then I have to think to myself, well that's great, but you know, what is it about food that you really like? And, and ultimately it comes down to um, they love the smell of it and they love the taste of it, which is great. But the crazy thing is, the two things that you can't get from watching uh, someone cook food on television is uh, the taste and the smell. So um, I'm going to chalk that up to one of the great ironies of the world. And today I'm going to uh, demonstrate how I smoke meat. Love to smoke meat. That was actually one of the things that I decided I was going to learn how to do once we started working out in this cabin uh, life. And uh, so I've been doing it for several years now and I don't think anybody should hold uh, good thing secret. So I'm gonna tell you how I do it. People seem to really like it. Uh, and the secret to mine is lots of brown sugar. Uh, so I've got a couple of pos uh, Boston pork butts sitting here and I'm gonna got the smoker outside. Uh, one of the first things that uh, I always do um, is light the smoker like two hours, two or three hours before you even plan on using it. Um, one of the things people do too often is they light the smoker and then try to throw stuff on. Smoker needs time to heat up, get the water going, get the heat stable so it's not coming up and down. Uh, and so the best way I can figure out how to do that is just let it burn for a while. And then once everything's sort of settled in, that's when you add the meat, which gives you time to do the prep, which is what I'm gonna do now. So I've got these two pork butts. And the first thing uh, I'm gonna do is talk about the injection. I always inject the meat uh, with something a friend of mine told me to good old-fashioned dark brown sugar and apple juice just plain old cheap off-the-shelf kind of apple juice uh, and what I do is I mix it about one to one so it's almost a syrup and stick it in the microwave and nuke that stuff for a couple of minutes get it good and hot stir it up so it all dissolves and then take your food injector and just randomly Start adding the good stuff. Now I'm gonna end up with more of this apple juice brown sugar concoction than I need for the injection, which is okay because then what I do is I fill up a spray bottle with the remnants and about every hour or so while I'm smoking, I'll uh, pop the lid open and then I'll spray down all the meat that I'm cooking with this stuff. Uh, works great for pork and chicken. Uh, beef, it's okay. I got some other options for beef, but 90% of what I smoke is pork and chicken anyway, so. Push it in slow, because if you push it in too fast, inject it, it will start squirting out the other holes. And then once you get to there, should be good. One of the purposes of that is, well, first of all, just to get some yummy goodness inside the uh, meat itself. But one of the other parts is the apple juice, the acid helps break down the meat structure and uh, makes it that much more tender. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is make the rub. Uh, I use some just really simple ingredients you can find at any grocery store. Um, it's nothing special, but it, it's really good. Uh, run of the mill, plain black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, cayenne pepper for the kick, and regular old salt, and um, the chipotle Tabasco I'm not actually using for this, but it's delicious on fried eggs. And this stuff, um, the Creole seasoning, uh, it's Kroger brand. If you have a Kroger around you, it's basically a generic version of uh, Tony Satchery's, um, but we actually like it a little bit better. We use it basically is a salt substitute. Uh, it's got salt in it, but it's just, if you like a little extra spice and kind of Cajun aspect cooking, good stuff. So, but I'm gonna set it off to the side for now. 
to put this stuff together, it's really simple. Uh, first, I'm going to set this stuff off to the side. Don't want to knock it over. Then I'm going to take a drink of some sweet tea. It's delicious. Set that to the side. Um, first thing, brown sugar. Find a cup. That'll work. All right, so the basic prep. So start with two, cup, two cups. This is a half cup, so I'll do four of these. And you don't have to be super precise with this. There's two. There's just a little bit left in there. So there's a cup and some change. Open up another one. Two. All right. Two cups and some change. Good enough. Set that to the side. Uh, the next thing, we're going to put salt and pepper. This is the next two big ingredients. So about four tablespoons. You know one of the problems with people today is they don't know how to measure. And so two, four tablespoons. One, two, like I said, you don't actually have to be really precise. But learn that trick. It impresses friends and it's great for cocktail parties. One, two, three, four. Next for the garlic, uh, we're gonna be putting two tablespoons. It's a pretty straight ratio. So one, two, onion powder, same. One, two-ish, and then for the kick, and depending on how hot you like it, you might want to add some extra cayenne or some less. I like my stuff with kick. And when you're doing something with like a pork butt, yeah, that's going to be more. When you're doing something like a pork butt, most of the seasoning, uh, is gonna, it's, it's all going to be on the outside. Um, but you have a lot more meat on the inside that doesn't necessarily get first dibs on it, it draws some of it in. So it's okay to be a little extra ambitious with the seasoning on something like that. When you get in ribs, you have to be a little more careful, but not too much more careful. All right, so we have all the seasoning in here, just mix it up. And this stuff holds pretty well. Um, it's, it's What I like about the seasoning, and this is just the way I like uh, my barbecue, is I like it to be sweet, but it's going to burn your lips just a little bit. And keep mixing it up. Brown sugar will sometimes clump up, so you can break up the little clumps. And by the way, for the northerners, this is just a southern thing. But uh, barbecue requires it to be on a smoker. Just going out and throwing some hot dogs on a grill, it's called grilling. Smoker, barbecue. Okay, now that we have that clarified. It's just a southern pet peeve. Yep, that's good. Good, 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 good. Okay, wash my hands. Find the towel. Okay, so next thing is we just to apply, and it's one of the other things people often don't do is they skimp on the seasoning. This is a called rub for a reason. Rub it in. Get it in there. Give it a massage. Talk to me. Lead me. There you go. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> I have a dork streak about a mile wide, just so you know.
Mm. And if you feel as if you don't have enough, I'm just going to use it all, so I'm not worried about sticking my hand in there. Flip it over. Kind of pull back the folds of meat, make sure you're kind of getting into all the crevices. And it will be guaranteed delicious. Now, uh, while we're doing this, talk about the smoking itself. Um, I've already told you, make sure your smoker is uh, been going for a while. Make sure it's what I call it's you know it's leveled out it's, or settled in. You'll hear that phrase a lot, um, and that just means the fire's been going for a while, and you're really working off coals. You've got some coals, and then you add some stuff. As far as what kind of wood, um, that all really depends on partially where you are. Here in the south, we have all kinds of hardwood. Uh, so I have oak mainly is what I smoke with. Uh, a lot of times I use it in wood scraps from the sawmill. Work great. Uh, or, you know, pieces of firewood. Uh, if I get the chance to add some wild cherry, um, I have a supply of that. And I like to add that. That adds a real mellow. Hickory is always good. Um, I think it gets a little more attention than it deserves. But, hey, whatever. It's good. Uh, one of the things I really like to do is add a little mesquite to it. Now, the funny thing about that is if it doesn't grow around here, but I have family who live in South Texas and it grows everywhere around there. And that's all they have and they're sick of it. And so typically I'll come up with some sort of wood swap. And so I'll take them some oak and they'll give me some, some of the mesquite. And I just throw a little bit of mesquite in while I'm smoking. So, all right, we're gonna let that sit and it's ready to go in the smoker. I'm gonna wash my hands again. Now, for the main event. All right, so here's my smoker. It's a homemade job. Love it. But for any person who smokes, you need to know how your smoker operates. Every smoker is gonna be a little bit different. You have hot spots, cold spots, um, and you need to kind of know where the, kind of the, the best places are for yours. So, open this up. Uh, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. I lit this thing about eight o'clock, so it's been going for several hours. Um, I've got a water pan underneath this. I always keep water in while I'm smoking so you're steaming and it helps also regulate the temperature of the uh, smoker. So, I'll throw these dudes on there. And my hot spots on these are in the middle. So I actually want to kind of set them off to the side on either end. I've got some other things I'm going to throw in here later. Some ribs. Alright, that's them. Close it up. Uh, as far as temperature on the smoker, I like to run mine about 220 degrees. Uh, and at that rate, these things will be done, oh, six to eight hours, depending on how uh, well everything operates. So, we'll see you in the process. Okay, so it's been a few hours. And these babies are looking good. This is the... Uh, apple juice and brown sugar concoction that I made earlier. So about every hour or so, I've just been coming in here and spraying these. But uh, it's getting pretty close to needing to wrap them up. Uh, one of the things, meat will only take so much smoke. And then after that, it really kind of becomes, you can actually get a little bit too smoky, especially if you've got smaller pieces like some of those ribs in there. Uh, so what I typically do after about three or four hours is I just wrap it all up in aluminum foil and we'll do that here in just a little bit. So it's time to put on, or wrap this stuff up in aluminum foil. So I have my industrial size aluminum foil that I picked up at Sam's. You can get it really anywhere that they sell, like uh, restaurant supply type stuff where you can buy things in bulk like Costco. But I like this stuff because it's big. And you can just put bigger cuts of meat in there. So I'm gonna start wrapping these ribs in first. 
And really, the ribs are close to done on their own. Normally when I smoke ribs, I always put all these in. They're still as a slab or a rack, but I didn't buy these. So this is actually kind of a new experience for me. We're gonna see how they do. Right now they seem to be doing pretty well. So just wrap it up tight, throw it on. The end result is they just end up cooking in their own juices. And uh, yeah, those are about done. Now one of the things, especially with smoking meat, people are afraid of fat. And I hate to tell them, but that's where all the flavor is. So whether you're buying some sort of meat to smoke or a steak, really, if you want something that's gonna taste good, you want what's called marbling, which is just a fancy way of saying it has fat in it. The lean stuff tends to dry out too much. Oh. Come on. There we go. You have to be careful. You don't want to pump out a delicious piece of meat onto the ground. These are pretty big, so I'm gonna go ahead and double wrap them. And really, once you get them to this point, um, you don't necessarily have to worry about keeping the temperature super low anymore. It's more like a traditional oven sort of scenario. Once they're wrapped up in the foil, it's really hard to burn them. I mean, you can, but it takes some work. But uh, very often when I'll do at that point, especially if I'm in a hurry, or under a time crunch, that's when I can actually um, soak up the fire a little bit. Push the temperature up to around 300 or so. What you want is an internal temperature of about 160 to 170. At 160, they're technically done, uh, especially for something like pork butt. You want... Um, I like to get it up to about 170 because it's typically a little more tender and it falls apart a little more, which is what you want. Ribs, um, you can typically tell, especially when they're on a full rack, once you actually get the meat drawing off the bones and the tips, that's about when they're done. But you can, they're a whole lot easier to tell. And uh, like I said, the ribs are about done. We'll let them sit for, oh, 30 minutes to an hour. And then these pork butts will hang out for a couple more hours and we'll have some time. We've got a few minutes. Well, heck, we've got a couple hours if we want it. Um, we've got time to uh, talk while the uh, meat's smoking, which is one of the advantages of smoking meat is you get lots of downtime. Um, but I want to talk about good things. Um, good things like days when the weather is perfect um, and you have a hammock in the yard and that's a good thing and you've got a good book and sweet tea in a mason jar. Um, I think too many people are, have, I think as a people we've gotten to the point that we're, we're okay, we're too okay 
with things just being average. We're not necessarily looking for the good stuff. We're looking for the okay stuff. And um, I think that's a terrible way to live our lives. Um, I, I know I have done that, and in really in many respects, um, I still do. Um, we're trying to change. But I think one of the things that sort of surprised us, and this is kind of one of the reasons I want to do this cooking video today, is sort of a change of pace. Um, one of the things that we've realized over the past few years um, is how many things that people don't know how to do anymore. Like the really good things. Um, like they don't know how to eat well. Um, they like to buy, you know, there's, they either just go out to eat, live on junk food, live on, you know, fast food, uh, or they live on these, you know, frozen food you pull out of the freezer and pop in a microwave. But you ask them to actually cook a meal, um, they're clueless. Um, it's actually one of the things we were working with the local um, um, food assistance program, uh, and one of the... the the attempts has been to uh, provide fresh vegetables and uh, for these folks and one of the things that they found out is people don't want them and it's not they don't want them not because they don't think they would taste good is they don't know what to do with a raw vegetable um, they don't know how they don't know where to start they don't know anything so um, you know so they're they're kind of forced to put together these you know prefab meals uh, and I think that kind of sucks for us as a society because I, th I see that way too often I work with you know college kids in my my day-to-day -day job and and more and more I see how you know schools have taught kids to be able to be really good at taking tests and do well in their ACTs and have good math skills but they haven't really taught them how to live and, you know, and we have more and more parents that are spending too many hours away from their house. Um, they're not really teaching their kids how to live either. Um, and so we model these things and it just starts to slide downhill to not really living but subsistence. And we found ourselves in that. And, you know, I've talked about that in depth in the past, but... Um, I don't want to live that way anymore, and I and I really don't think a lot of other people want to live that way either. They just, you know, you get you get sucked into it for so long, and then after a while, you don't even realize that that's where you are. That you you're eating, you know, pre-made food popped out of a microwave, um, or you're just going through a drive-through day in and day out. Um, you don't really know what the weather's like. Um, I mean, that's kind of a silly thing. Um, today's a beautiful day, and the reason I know that's because I'm out in it. A few days ago really kind of sucked because it was hot and humid, and I know that because I was out in it. Um, but this is the world we live in. And uh, so, today, I've chosen to, uh, I got some stuff done this afternoon, but I've also decided to cook some good food, read a good book, hang out in a hammock, drink some sweet tea, and talk to you guys. Um, and so I'm gonna be pulling that meat off here a little bit later, and you know what? Tonight we're gonna eat some really good freaking food. So, wish you could be here. Catch you after a while. After the meat got up to 170 degrees, I pulled it off the smoker and uh, brought it inside and uh, let it rest for uh, an hour or two till the temperature came down where it's actually kind of possible to handle. Um, but everything has turned out exactly as it's supposed to be. It all looks really good. Um, what you want to be able to do when it's all said and done is just be able to sort of pull it apart, you know, with a fork. And then you've got that beautiful sort of texture. You'll see in the same way with this one. You just take a knife or a fork and just sort of tear it apart. Uh, and this is where the pulled part comes from. And you'll notice once you get it in there, uh, it's really easy to see it on this one. You start seeing um, 
very distinct red line. Uh, that's what's called a smoke ring, and that's good. Some people get afraid of that and they think that's blood, but that's actually uh, perfect. That's what the uh, that's what you want it to be. I actually like to chop mine up, and I'll take a, like an ulu or just a knife or something and uh, take it over here. So let me slide that out of the way. Put some. Do this with either your cutting board or whatever. But you can shred it. We'll just shred it with a fork. There you go. Pork butt smoked for about seven hours at 220 degrees. I'll post the recipe on cabinpeople.com. Catch you later. Mmm.